just to introduce ourselves, we'll go down the line here. Um, we want to start the, um, Krista. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. I am Krista Grady Saxon. Um, I've been an actress for 20 plus years, and I finally got to the level of making um, studio films with Lionsgate, um, which is pretty cool, and an executive producer. Uh, owner of Nations Fire, a uh, SAG production that we filmed in LA a few years ago. Boy, do I have a story on the business side <coughs> of this industry. So I learned a lot and I'd love to share with you today. So um, yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't do any better than that. But I will tell you guys who I am as well. My name is Shannon Scott and I'm also an actress. I have been in a uh, of multiple independent films, but I've also also started recently creating my own films as well. So I am independent filmmaker, producer. I do all the things because you can't count on anybody else to make your stuff other than you. So that's a little bit about me. And side fun fact, I'm also a professional mermaid. Just throw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a voice actor as well. So that's a little bit about me. And the main man over here, oh. take it away. <laughs> Uh, my name is Robert Massetti. I am the owner of Fear Film Studios here in Orlando. Uh, also, am the I am the uh, festival director and uh, founder of the Freak Show Horror Film Festival. Uh, so, I'm celebrating a 25th anniversary for my company. So, we've been doing films for 25 years. Thank you. And the festival is going to be celebrating its 19th year this year. So. Uh, but, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you this, uh, being a festival director for uh, a film festival, I get to see a lot of films, obviously. And I'll tell you this, the films that have been submitted uh, from Florida have just been knocking it out of the park. You guys keep making those great movies. You guys are really, don't let anything stop you from making movies because it's been interesting to see and really, uh, I love it, it's great. So it's been inspirational, I should say, um, to see how films have progressed and filmmaking has progressed in Florida. So uh, even though it seems like the whole infrastructure of filmmaking has been decimated for whatever reason, and I don't know what happened, but independent film is still strong here, and you guys that are filmmakers or want to be filmmakers, do it. Keep making movies. Don't let anything stop you. That money nothing don't let i don't have the right equipment or nothing stop me from making movies you can use your phone and that's really good quality to make a movie so don't let anything stop you that's your dream pursue it do it so that's that's all right. <laughs> so um anybody have any questions before we start any any questions just kind of just arbitrarily quick just anything right there um, how did you guys get your start in filmmaking? So for me, I started uh, obviously as an actress, and I, I, it was just a hobby for me. And um, I took some acting classes, and we had an assignment, which was to create a headshot, you know, get a headshot made, and, and submit for um, auditions. And I seen a casting call come up for an inbred transient, and I said, I got this, <laughs> and I did. <laughs> and that was a short horror film called Filthy. And that film made the convention circuit around the country. We won 23 awards. And I've just been working ever since. And like you guys, this is my passion. I've tried to quit so many times. And it just didn't work out that way because this is what I'm meant to do, is filmmaking, telling stories through creation, through art. And I believe so much in the industry and what we all do that um, I learned that I, I kind of had the wrong perspective on the business side of things. Mm -hmm. So when I went in and I, I got some funding together to executive produce a feature film called Nation's Fire. And we got, um, you know, we made it a union movie and the budget started at 500K with the director from Hollywood and, you know, he, and we came up together. We started with independent films and now I'm back over here because this is what I want to do. But um, we started and um, uh, you know making movies together like 20 years ago. 
and he moved to LA and he came up because he just stuck with it and went through complete hell of you know struggling to pay the bills and live life and do his thing. But he didn't quit, he didn't give up. So now he's making movies on the regular with Universal Studios is, is his main um, production company. Um, but still the industry is incredibly rough. And one thing that I learned when we invested in this movie, we got taken for such a ride that we realized there it was the most foolish thing to do to spend $1 million on one film. We should always spend only 20k and less on these movies mm -hmm. put them out ourselves cultivate our own audience because no matter what you do if you do not have a pre-sell with a distributor whether it be netflix or an independent film distributor or whoever it may be if you don't have a pre-sell you've got nothing and it doesn't even guarantee they're going to pay you on that pre-sell deal so they prey on the the talent the hopes and the dreams of incredible creatives because they know that most of the time creatives aren't looking for the money we're doing what we love because we love what we do but when you put out a million dollars and you got investors that you're bringing in we're obligated to get that money back for them you know what i mean because they're believing in you they're standing behind you so one thing i've learned the hard way after not making one penny back because the distributor made the money gave us a great you know, projection sheet, you know, saying uh, territory, you'll get 150K in Germany, 100K in France, blah, 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 this and that, and that's what we're looking at. And then you don't get one penny made. And I learned that a part of that is because no matter what, we still are responsible for building our audience as we make that movie. So there's, um, and we had, you know, two time Academy Award nominee, Bruce Stern. I had Chuck Liddell, uh, Gil Bellows from Shawshank Redemption. We had names, and the names and familiar faces are what sell your film. And, um, and what's great now, though, you see a lot of things on all the streaming platforms, is that it's all about the talent now. It's not so much going that way with, with celebrity name, but it will be if you want to distribute your movie. But distributors aren't going to pay you anyway. So you guys, I'm, I'm going up because <laughs> this is so important to me. The one thing that I've learned on the business side of things is that, you know, the studios only bring in 2% of revenue from movies. So you've got all those Marvel movies, you've got all these, and, and this is through people who work with Universal who have worked side by side with 2% of the revenue is based on that. The rest is based on product. So essentially, a film is a commercial for your merchandise or whatever it is that you know you can you can monetize with that because i believe you guys have to monetize your product you cannot just keep going out there and spending your hard-earned money it's hard enough to live as it is so to find a creative way to build on the reverse engineer side of it will help you guys tremendously. And don't seek out a distribution deal. And don't look at it for, even if you go to, um, say, film fest and stuff, there's not people out there that are looking to buy films so much because they're getting them thrown at them like underwear at a rock star concert, right? You know, because they're, they're, there's just so much content out there. So build your audience from pre-production to post then put your money or your movie on whatever platform you want. And then when you have those ride or die followers, you can do anything you want and then grow from there. So that's you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really a nutshell. Wow. Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 Like, what would be the difference between like a publisher and like a distributor? Like, are they different in the film industry or are they both like active? Or would we call, like, um, well, a, a publisher usually is publishing books, um, yeah. and then a distributor would, would be. For I think movies. music. That's yeah, music. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's basically the difference. Yeah. They're not the same. No. Anything else? Yes, sir. Well, just go back to your distributor for a few off. I've heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. If they don't pay you up front, and I've heard you need to walk away right away, or they're not, you know. Um, but what about venue directly? <laughs> How do you see that working out? Like going to theaters, that's popular now. 
trying to get you to rent out your computer, sell it directly to them, sure. build up audience, then use that to get a distributor, or use that to kind of prove, hey, I have. <coughs> well, the, what she, her point is, is that the distributor, everyone, every filmmaker thinks that the distributor is the be all, end all, that's gonna make you all kinds of money. That's not true. I've been ripped off by every distributor that I've had. They, they have a certain amount of buyers. They take your movie, they'll take any movie, really. Mm -hmm. They have a certain amount of buyers. They know how much money you're gonna make off your movie, and then you're tossed. Then they move on to the next one. Yeah. So with self-reporting, it's the same thing. Yeah, so you can't verify their reporting right. at all. And Unless you take them to court and sue them, but then it's gonna cost you more money to sue them. Yeah, and do all the auditing and all that stuff, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm in the process of doing a film in August. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the decision that I'm making right now with investors, so. I would I would self-distribute. Yes. Self-distribute the movie. You can go to a theater and ask them, hey, rent out a theater. Um, you're just gonna need, what you need to do is if you're gonna budget a movie, you got a budget for promoting it. Yes. You need to have a part of your budget part for promoting the film when it's done. Okay. So. And then if you have an investor and you don't have that money, you need to go to an investor and say, look, we need to get more money so we can promote the movie and distribute it ourselves. If it becomes popular, you're gonna have distributors knocking on your door. I mean, if you look at Terrifier 2, what they did, they got a theatrical out of it and they raised 10 million, they got made $10 million on it after they did an Indiegogo pin campaign where they made 250,000 for the budget. So they didn't have to pay back investors and all that, so that was all profit for them. So really, that's the way to do it, you know, to, if you can get the, what you said, an audience, get your audience built up and have them help you out with it, you know, with an Indiegogo campaign or whatever. And I'm sure you're gonna to touch on this later, so I don't wanna take out, um, yeah. but uh, film festivals, do you still feel like that's the way to go for a lot of independent productions? A lot of people do go straight, you know, they build an audience, but film festivals were based like advertisement back in the day, right? Well, you know, it's, it's film festivals, you gotta look at it uh, to, as an exposure for your film. Um, if you go to certain film festivals, you're gonna get press for it, which is gonna help the film get some traction. You need to get that hype going. So that's really what you need to look at film festivals and specific film festivals that can give that to you. That's where you need to enter. Um, don't look at a film festival and say, oh, I'm gonna get a distribution deal for that. <coughs> you might, uh, but a lot of times, like she said, the distribution deals you know, are gonna be not what you want. So I see film festivals as exposure for your film. Thank you, that's very helpful. Sure, no problem. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, um, I am taking a PA training course in New York. Um, the the woman who runs it, her name is Amber Sherman, and it's called Beyond Film School. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, and I'm really excited, but um, I mostly work at conventions like these, and I'm wondering if like a set like that is the same kind of vibe as working at a convention, like where it's very fast paced and, and things like that. Do you have any advice for me before I do that workshop? Yeah, uh, yeah. Um it's very fast paced. I mean, if you're working at a convention, um, you can, you'll get that. That's good experience for you to be on a set because it's. It depends on the director and the production uh, how they run their sets because every set's different. Yeah. Um, I run my sets like really loose, but you you, you got to know what you're doing too. So because uh, there's always a possibility you could trip over a cord and act on the right, camera. Yeah. And there's, you know. And, and I will jump in yeah, just to just to say this. Uh, you have to always look at things from the outside in, right? You have to consider what everybody's going through during their, their schedule. There's a lot on the director's mind. There's a lot on everybody's minds. Like, you have to consider that, but also know, like, conventions here, everybody's freaking amazing. Like, their, their energies are alive and they're fun, upbeat, and everybody wants to be here to share those good times and memories made. However, <laughs> although you all come together to create a film, a magical thing that you're wanting to get out in the world, you have this vision, you wanna create it, there's gonna be a lot of bumps, especially, like Robert said, who you work with. 
every director is different and some will call themselves directors and they might not really be they well they might not be meant to be a director so they don't consider what the actors go through they don't consider uh, how stressed everybody else is they just focus on their job and what they think they need to do and sometimes they have this this macho presence about themselves, yeah. right? And and they, they feel like they can talk to everybody in a mis like, you know, just condescending manner. Yeah. And it's not cool, but you have to work through that and remember that you are here to create this magical wonder piece of art that yeah. you have in your mind as a whole. And no matter what so and so is going through, yeah, okay, maybe he, he's having a crappy day and just it's help for you you got to just shift your shift your vibes <laughs> kind of try to block that out and focus on your jobs and trying to help everybody around you make the experience better because uh, uh, yeah you're gonna you're gonna run into them and it's not fun and it's super stressful I kid you not when I was making my own first film many bumps down the line I lost my hair. I started losing my hair due to all the stress and miscommunication. Communication is key, everybody. If you learn one thing today, <laughs> take away communication. If something's going on and you don't feel good about a situation, yes, take a step back, breathe, assess, maybe talk to somebody else to see their feelings on what you should do to talk to said person. And then if it gets to where a point where you're just losing your hair like I did, you can have a conversation, say, hey, I need to talk with you. This is important. We're not, we're not on the same vibes. Like my energy is up here, happy-go-lucky, and your energy is way over here. I don't know where. And we need to come to a common ground. What do you need from me to make this experience, this this community a good one so we can we can make this production happen in a happy environment mm -hmm. so that's that's all it is. but going to school get it learn as much as you can and take it take it to everywhere and anywhere you go because that education is and you need it that's what you need like you're always learning and growing and you're always gonna have something new to take away. So I'm proud of you for taking the step to go towards your dreams and your goals. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. Thank you You're so gonna much. be amazing. Thank yeah. You. Okay, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> great, great. That was good. But, and, and I'll, I'll touch on the point that you brought up um, as far as working on an independent film. When, you, when you're making a movie, you just don't think that, oh, I'm the director and that's it. I learned every aspect of filmmaking when I was making movies because when I'm making movies, I never had money when I was making my movies. So we would come to the day of the shoot, where's my cinematographer? Oh, they didn't show up. Oh, where's my sound guy? He's not here. Okay, so I had to build my own rig and shoot the thing myself to learn every aspect. Don't think that, oh, I'm the director and that's it. Learn every aspect of filmmaking. It's very important. And including, if you're a director, learn acting. Because you have to understand what these actors are going through. It's traumatic sometimes. <laughs> they got a camera in their face, they got a boom guy, got all these people running around. So you, you need to know acting so you can communicate to your actors so they can understand what you want. And again, as a director, you have to know what you want. Just don't go, oh, I don't know. I don't know where we're going on this. Absolutely. It's just going to bring the whole set down, and no, you got to. You're, you're the captain. Learn, learn to focus, and try to find where you're going, and boom, focus on that. So. And you will lose people. I, I promise, you will lose people on production. I don't care. Oh sure. yeah. Uh, it's going to happen. So just be prepared and roll with those punches. Just roll with them. Oh, actor's not coming to set today. He bailed on us. No problem. We're going to kill him off in the movie. We're going to just yeah. go with it. Yeah. Anybody you're working with. Yep. Any other questions? Filmmakers out there, you don't have any questions? Come on. There you go. This is 
more of a writing question. Okay, writing question. I mean, I'm sure I'll go for a filmmaker. I'll have to learn writing like I'm acting. My question is, I always watch a lot of stuff like film curves on YouTube about the writing process, and representation, and the writer strike all. I was just asking your take on the writer's side. I want to write this idea, but you know, the red tape or the politics behind it, or is it just I'm the director and the writer, so therefore I can skip the middleman. I just want to hear your thoughts or opinions on the writing process to get it to actually be greenlit and to be made. Well, I, I write uh, all my stuff for films. Um, I don't try to submit my screenplays anywhere to get made because, I, I, like I said, I do it all. But my my writing process, I um, I like the most important thing is is that when you think the script's done, it's never done. Even when you're on set, it's always changing. Um, I, I I change stuff all the time. But it you're, you need to have that basic beginning, middle, end, and the conflict and have all that stuff working before you start changing stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't. Uh, I don't try to submit, so I'm not a good person to ask about submitting screenplays to other production companies. But uh, if you don't grab them in the first 10 minutes, you're not going to get anything made anyway. So you need to have a. If you look at any uh, James Bond movie, the first 10 minutes, you get you really into the movie, and then you get into the guts. But you're like all psyched because there was a big action scene. Perfect example of grabbing your audience and then, okay, now I got you. Now let me explain the story. But I, when I was in film school, when I was taking screenwriting, they always said, when you're writing, it's like a clock. The beginning is the end, the end is the beginning. It's always going around and around and around. So everything's connected. So when you start your screenplay, it's the, the end of a movie, and then and when you end it, it's going to be like, a, oh, there's a sequel going to be coming? So that's, I don't know if that answered your question or not, but. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a perspective that I like to hear, so I'll like to feel that I'm at least going in a similar direction. Not being like I've made a complete left turn, and like, yeah, I need to get back over there. No, but I, I'll tell you this, that, you know, the screenplay is the most important aspect, I mean, the most important thing, because um, you, you don't have to spend any money on it. You can spend spend most of your time on your screenplay. Get that thing down, because you're not spending any money on <laughs> it, except for your time. But, uh, but yeah, don't just like, Crank out a screenplay and say, "Oh, it's done." No, keep going. Keep, keep looking at it. Keep looking at different things, aspects. Is their characters really flushed out, or you know, what's what's the motivation? What's what's it really? What's the character's real motivation? What's underneath that? You know, uh, if you look at any popular movie, they have char people like the movies because the characters, because they're so layered, they're so deep. So you need to really work on your characters, and, uh, and of course your story, but. Your characters are very important. Make them unique. Make them something that you've never seen before. Because every story's been told, but you know it's coming from your perspective. So then it'll work better. So. Yes. Oh, <clears throat> um, so like I have a question um, related to like music and film. Mm -hmm. How do you pick uh, songs and music to go with the film? And I'm only asking because I'm a musician and like I just I would love to have my band's stuff on film. I just don't know where I would start with like how does that work? So I know for me, like when I made Nations Fire, um, we had it was mostly through kind of word of mouth that everybody was aware of the movie being made, and then um, local artists would submit, and then somebody would send it to me, and then we would listen to it, and we got a lot. We had great soundtrack out of that um, and so I, and that's kind of the best way but I would also I get a lot of emails and posts like the movies that movie came out like four years ago and people still write me you know for other films in the future and then I can pass that along when I hear some good I'll just you know because I'll get an email to look up IMDB and contact you know, different movie producers and production houses, production companies, and you put together a nice little package and include your music and your contact information, and oh, you bet you'll have somebody reach out to you for that, you know? So, thank you pretty cool. Yeah, yeah I, I got contacted by some um, composers in uh, England, and they sent me their 
music and I was like, oh, well, they didn't, they didn't, you know, they were like, oh, you need to give me this money. They were like, I just want the music in your movie. And I'm like, that's fine, that's great, I'll put it in there. But yeah, just contact, like you said, just contact different production companies. And, like some, I think SoundCloud, you can put your movies on there and just send them a link to it and have all your songs in there. And, yeah, we have like a Spotify song. Oh, Spotify, yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, how do you come about your financing? How do you also, I guess, find a potential producer which would have the money? And last, what would be the average budget of your guys' films? That's a good question. So, um, yeah, so through, as far as we did, I know, personally, I think Indiegogo is great now that I look back at it because you're building an audience that's invested in your movie. They have a stake in that movie, right? So they, and they're more inclined to share it with their friends and family because now they're a part of that project in some way, right? Um, but through private investors, I'll tell you the way that they do it in Hollywood is you'll have a sales agent slash producer who is, they're, they're typically, they're scumbags, you know what I mean? And they go, and they'll go around and um, they know what independent films are being made or the buzz around indie films over there, right? So, and that's how they got us. And we're here in Florida, we filmed in Florida and then some over there. Um, but what the way they, the business model works is they, there's a bank that they take out a loan through and they'll have a set amount of money because they've already been selling films to distributors or whatever and so they'll go take out a loan and then they'll they'll get it for like 10 different productions but they'll say it's for like two then they'll pocket some money and then put some money towards these movies say at 100 grand a piece and make five of them in a year and then they got their pre-sell on it but they don't tell independent filmmakers like us that this is how it actually works so we go to private people like I put money in myself and I got some business acquaintances to put money in themselves. I found guys who are, um, you know, just want to be in movies so bad, and that's a very common thing that people are doing now is a pay pay for play, and that's where actors um, will pay to have a role in the film rather than you paying them. And uh, and I see that a lot, and I'm like, this is insane to me that actors are paid to pay for play, right? And so, um, but I had a producer, he's eight million in, and uh, we did a film called Checkpoint, and he put two million in on that movie. And my friend got him to fund that movie just through the grapevine because he just wanted to be involved in <coughs> production. And these are people that just want to be actors. Those are your best bet because they're not looking for the money back, they're gonna move on to the next project. And they're aware of how the industry works what i would do lower as low as possible i mean because look at what we have the resources we have at our disposal now anybody can make a movie like you said with your phone and a beautiful quality freaking 8k but you know and um so and you know beautiful sound and, and to me it's all about a creative story something brilliantly written um with depth of character and minimize your locations so you don't have a ton of locations. You're gonna save a lot of money on that. Smaller cast and crew and make it story based. Um, and then I would seek out investors through asking people that you potentially know. I mean, to start and, and then, but you have to have that plan for, when we first did ours, we went around the country and I, I, I work in aviation software development. And we went around to different guys that I know in the industry who have money. And they're like, oh, am I gonna give my money back? And I'm like, well, and then we sit there and we're like, oh, good question. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll figure it out. Back. There's Netflix, there's this. <laughs> and it was all bull crap because that, you know, we didn't know at the time how it really works. So I would say if you could get 10, 10 to 20 grand, like do real low, lower budget movies. I mean, some people do one, two, five thousand. We just did a movie called The Clock, actually, um, I worked on. These guys, it, it's, I think it's actually screening here. Um, it is yeah, cool. yeah, through uh, Enigma Films. But this was amazing, because it was a $5,000 budget. And the movie looks amazing, with 
the effects and, and all of that. And so, um, you know, you can make your money back quickly just four walling that at a couple of theaters. Like you're saying, they call it four wall, they'll rent out the theater and then put that money up front and then of course, you know, get ticket sales for that. And there's some cheap independent theaters that you could actually use to to um, make money on that. Yeah, and, and you can you can get software online to make a DCP, which is what you need to project it in a cin cinema for free. So it's not going to cost you anything to put a feature in a theater. So all it's just going to cost you is a rental. And there's a lot of independent theaters around here or anywhere in the country that you can contact and say, hey, I want to rent a theater out and just sell tickets to, to your screen. That's the best way to do it, really. I mean, don't let somebody take 50% of your movie when you don't have to, I mean, do it yourself, you know? But I agree, investors yeah. is the hardest part. It is. Because this is, you know, it's it's a 99% failure rate in this industry, monetarily, and that's just the reality of it. That's why I think like the Indiegogo campaigns are great. Um, something yeah. you can do, it's just all about using those creative skills to build your audience and get them to come. Yeah, you don't, you don't need, like, I hear all the time, oh, I need $100,000 for my movie, but do you really need $100,000? I mean, you know, some people will defer their salaries, they'll, I, I, I've made movies with credit cards uh, just to pay, basically it just needed to feed people on the set. You know, give them the basics. You don't have to spend $100,000 to make a good movie, that's the whole point. You don't need money, I've made, 15, 20 movies with no budget whatsoever, you know. Of course, there's compromises, yes. Uh, you can't get, you can't make a, a like a Hollywood looking movie, but really, do you need to? You just need to tell a good story, like you said, that's the, that's the whole key. And yeah, it, I've seen movies where they shot in one room. There's a whole entire feature just in one room. But it works because why? Good writing, good characters, and just an interesting story. Do your best with what you got. Yes. That at the end of the day, that's all we can do, right? But if you let it sit in your head and you don't do anything with it, like if you sit on, I don't have the money, I can't do it, I can't do it, it's never gonna happen. So no matter what you got in this moment, just start, whether it's reaching out to your friend who you know wants to act in a movie, okay, I'm gonna write a, write a part for this person and you know just connect with people and just make it a small cast and try to think outside the box versus what everybody else is doing at the moment and thinking I need this in order to get there you don't and nobody knows what's gonna happen you can have the biggest budget ever and it could still be a flop right so you can make is if you got anything to sell around your house, sell it. Get the funds that you need to just feed your actors, to just make something happen. Connect yourself with good people, good energies, and just do it, no matter what your budget. $200, I don't care, that's perfect. <coughs> On your way. Yeah. Just curious, when you find your actors, what has been the best resource to find them good talent? As a follow-up to that, uh, once you find your actors, you, you sign them to some sort of contracts so they have obligations to finish the project. Maybe it's the thing they want to be an actor, but then halfway through it's like, oh, this isn't really for me, so then you're kind of stuck there. So how do you prevent that aspect of it being dependent instead of a smaller film? Uh, well, I find my actors uh, just through networking. Um, I found a lot of actors because I run a film festival, so there's a lot of actors that come to the film festival and I, I see their work and I'm like, hey, you want to be in a movie? And they're like, oh, sure. Um, but if uh, you're like, if you're trying to like, raise like a, uh, somebody with its uh, celebrity status or something like that, um, oh, I've done. Um, uh, you, you do a contract where you say, look, you're interested in making the movie, but you're not committed to it. But so I can try to raise money and say, oh, you're attached to it, but depending on if you get the budget or if they like this or like that. So you can negotiate with the, uh, with the actors. I don't know. Yeah, finding, yeah. finding your actors through networking yeah. is fantastic. 
like Robert was saying in the beginning when he was taking, he's took, taken acting classes and done that sort of thing as well. You can meet great actors in acting classes because if they give a damn about their craft, which they should, then they are gonna be the ones who are in those classes trying to further their education and trying to get more out of themselves for the director and everybody involved on set. So I would suggest taking those acting classes, making friends with those actors there, and you, even then, so say you did a casting call somewhere, wherever it is, there's, there's multiple places online, you know, you could do anything online right now, but you might get bamboozled by some of these actors, because they can come in with a decent audition and get to your set and totally flake on you. It happened to me. It happened to me. To me. <laughs> and it is a horrible experience, but you that's when you just roll with it. But know that the best places, in my opinion, are those acting spaces because they, they really care about their craft. Yeah, because even if you're on social media, you know, and you can put out a casting call and say, look, I'm looking for talent on this, and then through your friends or whatever, I mean, obviously, if you're in the industry too, then you'll you'll get a lot of people reaching out to you for that, and um, and then of course you know you can do your auditions from there. What was your other question? You had something about contract. Well, I think you kind of followed up with that. It's just not just finding talent, but it's also wanting to protect the project by making sure that the images don't go down. There's a lot of paperwork that I suggest going into any movie. And that's even no matter how small your budget is, because you want to protect the screenplay, you want to protect yourself in the event that, you know, as the filmmaker, the owner, producer, um, in the event that you do sell the movie so that you are guaranteed your rights, your back end, if they, if, if it all goes well and whatever. But you know what I mean? So there's a lot. And of course, the actor's agreements and the releases. You, there's so much paperwork that goes into that and you want to make sure that you're well protected. Every movie needs to be looked at as a unique business. I am, this is a startup. So you got your screenplay, you got your story, and so, and so that doesn't stop once you end the movie, right? We always open an LLC. So for each movie, you open your LLC and then um, you keep that open for a few years to protect you from any type of lawsuits, because some people get that way, especially if they think you have money or whatever, you know, you don't know. But at least you have the LLC and then, um, you know, your business bank account and all of that, because this is your business and you want to treat it as, as such, so, and protect yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Oh, we got one. I just want to ask, you are aiming to do cinematic lighting and cinematic sound, but you only can film with the phone. Should you go for it, or should you just try to use whatever you got? Well, I I, sh I love it that some of my movies I got I went to Home Depot and just got one of those lighting. You know, there's just a dish and you put a bulb in. <laughs> it's a clip light, I think it's called. Yes. I I use that. You can um, <coughs> well now that you can shoot with. Um, uh, in certain modes, and you can manipulate the color and pose to make it look very cinematic, even if you don't have the lights, even if you don't. Just make sure that you, you know, have the proper ISO and all that other stuff set, and then, you know, fix it and post it, they say. Because you can always change colors there and make it look cinematic. The only reason uh, they say, oh, cinematic, I mean, that term is so, it's so wide. Um, basically, you just want to have your Blacks as black as you can get, and your white's not overblown. So then have everything in between. Everything's fine. But yeah, it's it's just a matter of taste. Really. I mean, you can make anything look really cinematic just with your camera angles and everything else. You know, it's, like I said, it's just a matter of taste. So, yeah, don't stress about it. Yeah, don't stress just about do it. Buying light. I mean, you should buy some lights, but you don't have to. You can get away. You can use house lights. Sometimes. I've done that too. Yes. We're doing like audio on a budget and we can't really afford like a mic. Mm -hmm. What are some ways around? You can use your phone. Like 
I, I use my phone. That phone actually has good mics on it. Um, if, yeah, if you don't have a mic, it can just record sound on your phone and just use that as a recorder if you don't have anything else. And use another phone to shoot it. I've done that. I know it's hard to try to get the, the phone in there for sound, but uh, you know, mics aren't that expensive really. And you can get a decent mic for under 100 bucks if you wanted to. And it sounds like fantastic, but you can always fix the sound too if you know what you're doing in post. Exactly. You put some different filters on there and stuff, it'll sound great. Right, you know? Yes. Yes, but with that said, I would say that if you had any kind of budget whatsoever, I would try really, 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 Advice. really hard Advice. to get a sound guy who knows what he's doing. Vet that person up and down because sound is it's everything and if you don't have it you can work with bad shots you can work with lighting that you can work with it but if you don't have the good sound and you don't have the software to help that sound get get a little better it's it's tough it is tough to do that so from my experiences i am giving to you just just hold on to that memory of shannon says Get a sound guy, please. It is worth it. Because my background is like music and like music production. So I do have like some like budget microphones, like uh, like an eight, like a really cheap condenser mic and a cheap. Yeah, so I, I, in, in a fire, if I were you, I would save up for a Sennheiser yeah. mic. You can get one for under 300 bucks and it, things incredible. Yeah, it's a really I do great of directional mic. Okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Yeah, I agree with Robert. Just try to save up just at least a little bit to get a, a good shot done, like yeah. that will I think make the play. What I meant was more if I had like these cheap microphones on hand, how do you record sound with like Yeah, I think I, yeah, I mean, it, you can try to fix it, and like, if you're a music guy, you could probably fix it. But yeah, it's not gonna be perfect if it's not recorded properly. Yeah, it's not gonna. Sound yeah, like. you can do it. It yeah. can be done. I work with crap audio, and yeah. I am, I am losing the term loosely. I am fixing the audio. <laughs> it can be done with the right software, and uh, I can tell you that software too. But that software costs a little bit of money as well. But you can do it. Yeah. At the end of the day, it just do the thing to make the movie, right? Yeah. So you can do it totally. I believe in you. Yes. Um, do you guys, uh, speaking about especially lighting, do you guys have any um, advice for night shoots specifically, especially working in horror and everything? As, as far as what? Um, as far as lighting, as well as just any other tips you have about like the best way, especially organizing actors, locations, just how the best, the best way to organize a night shoot as far as lighting? As lighting as well, lighting specifically, yes. Well, I mean, um, you know, it depends on what you're trying to go for. Um, I, I try to, as a night shoot in horror, um, I don't use a lot of lights because I like dark. I like the, I like the kind of the film noir type thing. So as far as trying to set up lights um, on location where you don't have electricity, um, I would, try to rent a generator. You can rent a generator. I mean, some of them are very loud, but you can get generators that are very quiet and uh, use that. I have lights that you can put batteries on, so I can shoot in any location with batteries. Um, that's what I would recommend, get the lights with batteries or something like that. You could go to, like, you, could go to like, you could totally go to Home Depot yes. or Harbor Freight and get some of those just nighttime lights too, mm -hmm. and just push them far in the distance to get the, the look that you're going for or close up, whatever. But do do it on the cheap, whatever you can do to save money. But yeah, it's cheap stuff. Yes. Do you have any advice for someone who would want to go into set design or, or props? I do. Well, just doing it. Just doing it. So if you, if you make your own production, you can have everything look exactly how you want it. The first movie that I acted in, I was actually a set designer as well because budget is low, and so what do we do? Well, we'll figure out a way to do it. You don't know the answer, I'll help you find the answer sort of deal. So what do you do next? You go to Goodwill, those thrift stores, and just 
have fun on your budget and just des design your own seats, mm -hmm. design your own set. And then you can use that, or if you do, to take and say, I did that. Yeah. So, if that answers your question. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> just to let you know, because we did a production and we had to make a 1970s style room. Oh, wow. So we went to Home Depot. Yeah. Okay, uh, since I was a vet, I got a 10% discount. We took uh, some plain wood boards. Mm -hmm. We painted it, you know, with wood stain and everything. Uh -huh. uh, we had some friends that had some old, funky, 70s style yeah, stuff. Yeah. Placed them in the side of the room there, and we did it for a budget of less than 100 bucks. Wow, that's and amazing. we actually did a complete room to make it look like a 1970s awesome. style. Is there a question? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So I have two children. But they've done like, student books like and all that thing. I need to be aware to look. You're saying networking and more active classes, but obviously active classes that they go to, someone like you is not going to be there with the children. Um, where would like where would you go? You, and there's, you could go to um, uh, schools. There's different film schools. They're yeah. always looking. That's for what they're doing. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah, that's a okay, start. That's great that they're actually doing that. Yeah. No full set of ones. No, yeah, it's yeah, perfect yeah, yeah. because they're meeting, they're, they're working with those directors who you don't coming, know yeah. where they're going to go in the future. And you just keep in touch with them as the years go by and just don't let those contacts fall through the cracks. You know, everybody they meet is going to be somebody who can, who they there's work with. There's also like, uh, there's different websites for casting too, like Orlando okay. Green Room. We, That's like, what I don't yeah. see. I don't know that one. Yeah, Green, Green Room Orlando. Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of local, local. Um, casting websites. Yeah. And like she said, that's great advice. You know, where you keep in contact with all the people that you meet and work with in the industry. I mean, because uh, our films required a lot of children. We had a lot of school scenes and a lot of, and those kids went on to continue working because we developed relationships with the parents and became friends and, you know, and so, it, What's really cool is when you work on one production, most people stay together forever. Like those people yeah. never get out of your life, you know, like they're, you are family. They and that's what people. Yeah, oh, because you'll continue, you know, total, it is so true, <laughs> and we'll continue to work together no matter what happens, yeah. you know? And it's it's really neat because we have a lot of the same cast and they, they were like, oh, oh cool, we need to work together again, you know? And, like this we like the vibe we had and the set and same kids same everything so yeah just developing those relationships all right we gotta we gotta wrap things up we're gonna keep this out of here but thank you for coming out thank you for uh and supporting yeah. and, 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 and thank you for making your films whatever they may be yeah. thank we're, you so much we have a booth here um and if you want to stop by three or film booth there's a lot of different booths we have a booth here um and if you want to stop by a career film booth and we're all there if you want to ask questions there uh we're happy to answer those Thank you again for coming out. Yes, thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you.